Hello everyone, it's Dennis again, Dennis Simplifies. In today's video on Java, what we are going to do is to learn how to store our outputs using files and exceptions. So sit back, relax, and as always, let's simplify. So from our previous video on this playlist, that was payroll system, we talked about OOP that is object oriented programming where in that video we created one main class with three sub methods and then the first method was computing for the gross pay and then we had a second method which computed for the taxes and then we have our last method which integrated the two previous methods to compute for our net pay now if you remember when we run our code we displayed our output on the terminal and then when we displayed our output on the terminal we saw how the result was and then the moment we killed the terminal we realized that we lost all the data meaning anytime you want that information we'll have to keep inputting the data before we get the results now the concept of files and exceptions is that we want to keep this output we want to keep the results every time we run our code in the file so to do this we have to first create a file and then keep our output inside it so that anytime we need that output we can just open that file and have access to the information we need so that is what we are going to do basically in this video learn how to use these files and their exceptions to keep the information that we will get when we run our code so starting from the top in our previous video we used the java.util.scanner which enabled us to take input from the user now we are going to use some other classes that is io buffet writer io far writer and an io io exception now as you go along you understand what these things they do so let's go down to where we are supposed to start from now i'll advise that if you don't know or don't understand any of these codes go back to my previous video on the payroll system where we actually analyze everything inside this code so we're going to use the same code but this time write our output into a file the the link to the payroll system video will be in the description so if you go down to the code we wrote in that video we had a comment called another for loop to print out all the data and since we are printing uh, printing out our data now not on the terminal but right now on the file we are going to start from there so in the you remember that we had everything here so what we're going to do with this file writer is that all the codes we have down there that is under the another for loop to print out all the data we are going to copy all of it and put it inside a try catch block so you can see a try a curly brace over here and then the end of that curly brace end over here you see we are putting the jj so it ends over there so it ends over here so it starts from the top here and then ends down here so that is you put all the codes inside it then you come to the catch block you put the exception that is the io exception error e and then you bring another set of curly braces over there we'll come back to these things later so now let's focus more on our try block now now inside our try block we started with the emp now because one in the previous video indicating that the first employee now we have to first create a file that is going to keep our output. So we are going to write certain information into this file. So we say we use the file writer. Remember that at the top we imported a file, a class called file writer, if you remember. So we had this file, this when you're using the file writer, the one on top here, file writer. So we go down to the file writer here. And we say file writer file writer equals new file writer then what kind of file do we want to write into we give it a name called payroll.txt that is the file we want to write something into now this file writer is enough if you are dealing with very small data if you are writing something very small into a file just using the file writer is enough but then here comes the case that the the number of employees could be very large there could be a thousand employees there could be two thousand employees and this file writer will be very slow in writing the data into this payroll.txt file so you have to use something that is faster than this file writer which we call the buffet writer 
So to use this buffer writer also, we'll have to import it on top here. So as you can see, I have this buffer writer on top here. So I have imported that class also. So again, we come down here. So buffer writer, writer. Now I give it an instance called writer equals new buffer writer. Then remember, you can see here that I have placed this file writer into this buffer writer. So I want to speed in up this file writer. I want to make it faster. So I've placed it inside this buffer writer, right? <coughs> now we can write. Now that we have created this file, we can write something to the file. So to write something to the file, we are going to use the instance from the buffer writer, writer. So you say writer dot write. Now I want to write. Now this write is is a method so what do i want to write into the file i want to write employee number the gross pay deductions and then the net pay that's what i want to write into this 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 file payroll.txt that's going to be the heading for what we want to put inside our file so we're putting the heading over there now in our previous video we had this for loop that computed for all the gross pays all the taxes and all the net pays for all the employees so the same thing over here the only difference is that you can see here that the system.out.print line that we wrote over here it has changed to writer.write. You can see that system.out.print line it displays your output to the system or to the terminal. This time we are not displaying to the system or to the terminal, we are writing it to a particular file. So we say writer.write, then it should it should it should print all the information, all the gross pays, all the taxes, and all the net pay. You should put it inside. Or you should write it inside this payroll.txt. You shouldn't display it to the system, but this time on the payroll.txt. Right now, at the end over here, you can see backlash n. This backlash n means that the moment it's done with the first employee, you should move to the next line and print for the next employee, next line, the next employee, next line, the next employee. So backlash n, which is a is an escape sequence, it means that you should move to the next line for all the employees. Alright. So that will be it for the for loop there. And then when we come here to, if you remember from our previous code, we were using system.out.print line. Now again, you're going to change that to writer.write because you are writing it now into a file. So we change all the system.out.print line into writer.write. And then at the end of it here, we add backlash n, meaning when it is done printing this equal to, it should move to the next line. Again, when it is done printing out the total amount paid to the employees, you should move to the next line, backlash n. The same thing over here, backlash n, move to the next line. This equal to signs, backlash n, move to the next line. And then just as when you are writing inside the book, when you are done writing, you have to take your pen off the book and then close the book. It's the same thing here. When you are done writing into the file, you must close the file. And remember, this is a must. It is not an option. You must close the file. So to close it, we use the writer.close method to close this class called writer that we have created or the instance writer that we have created. You always have to close it. Please remember to always close it when you are done. Now, now that we have closed it or we have closed our, our, our writer, now to the catch part. Now to this catch part, when it catches something, it means that it is catching an error. So the moment it catches something, the IO exception error only catches errors. That is what it catches. It only catches errors. So anytime it catches an error, they want to display it this time not to the file, but then to the system to that an error has occurred. So you say system dot out of print line and or an error sorry has occurred. Now we have error dot print stack trace method here. Now in programming we have two types of memory. We have the stack memory and then the dynamic memory. The dynamic memory comes in different forms. You have the references and then the pointers. Now you can see here that we are not using references and pointers over here. So it means that the type of memory we are using here is the stack memory. So we are saying that if there is an error on the stack or on the stack memory, you should trace it and then print it out so that we know where that error occurred. You can see that we have numbers over here. 9900, 101, 103, and blah blah blah. <coughs> so, what happens is that <coughs> if there is an error, you should trace that error from the stack and print it so that we know where that error occurs. So, that we have error.print stack trace. 
and we have a semicolon. Now remember scanner.close from before in our previous code that we have to close it so that we have to prevent memory leaks. We use the, remember that we use the scanner to take input from the user. So if you are done taking input from the user, again you close it. So scanner.close over here. So I've been talking a lot. Now let's run our code so that we print our output to the file that we are talking about. So to do that, let me let me leave the code this way so that you see it for the last time. Now I'm going to minimize it so that we can run the code. So I'm restoring it from here. Alright. So from here, I am going to run the code so that we all see how it goes. So it's asking for the total number of employees. Let's try four. So the number of hours worked for the first employee is employee one. Let's say 45. Number of children, let's say five. And then the staff, let's say junior. Employee two, 67. Let's say number of hours is three. Again, let's say junior. Employee three, let's say 89. Number of children, let's say two. Again, let's take junior. And then the last one, we have um, number of hours, so let's take 23. Number of children, let's take 5. Again, let's take junior. Or you can take senior as well. Alright, so now you can see that when I pressed, when I point on top, enter on my keyboard, it didn't display anything. It just brought this thing over here, meaning it has ended. So what it means is that the file that we created called payroll.txt, the output of this code has been printed over there. So let's go to our files and then find this payroll.txt and see if the output of this code has been printed over there. So I'm going to my files over here. Now on my files, you can see the file that I have. You can see that there's a file named payroll.txt which we created in our code. Now I'm going to open it to see if the data from our code has been printed there. So I'm going to open it from here. So now you can see from here that, let me enlarge it. So you can see that we have employee number. We had four employees, right? If you do remember, we have their gross piece, their deductions, and then their net piece. And then we have the information, their total amount paid to the employees, and then the average amount paid to the employees all down here. So you can see that we have been able to successfully print out the output of our code into a file. Now, remember that with this file, even if we close our application, we will always have this data. It won't be lost and we can use it anytime you want. But when you are using, when you are using the terminal, when, whenever you kill your terminal, that's it. You lose everything. But with the file, you always have it. Alright friends, so that's it for the video. Just a recap on everything that we've just done. Is that we're printing out the output of our previous code, which was the OOP Java we did before, we are printing everything out into a file called payroll.txt and then we use our try and catch block to catch our exceptions and our try block where we place all our code inside. And this time, since we are not using, we are not printing out to the terminal, we use writer.write instead of system.out.print line. <coughs> instead of system.out.print line. So that is basically how we went about our code. So if you want to understand the previous code, Check out our, my previous video on payroll system where we built the whole payroll system in that video. So that's it basically for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, apart here. Yeah.